Uh, welcome to foreign language, language class. So uh, Freifunk is a German compound word and frei means free. And funk does not mean funk, it means radio as in radio signal or radio transmission. So to put in more complicated words, what we do is free and open wireless community networks. And uh, before I get to the socially more acceptable stuff, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about like um, what's slightly special about the technology that we use. So what we do is mesh networking. Just imagine you have a couple of Wi-Fi routers, like regular home devices, distributed throughout your city. They are symbolized by yellow anchors in this figure. Don't ask why yellow anchors, it's a hammock thing. And their radio range is symbolized by a magenta circle. So you would have maybe one router in one part of town and two routers in another part of town. And uh, at the bottom of the screen, uh, you've got three routers, uh, the two can obviously talk to each other because they're in radio range of, with, of each other, but the three at the bottom are not, but still the left one can talk to the right one uh, using the middle node. So, and then you would find your uh, end devices like smartphones, laptops, Raspberry Pis, whatever you hook up to it, uh, connected to your Freifunk routers. Now every device in each of these clouds can talk to every other device within that same cloud. But what we want to do is build a city-wide network. So we want it all to be connected into one and you cannot do that right now. So what we do is, or what you could do is you uh, could do long distance radio links and we do that, but it's a lot of work. Easier is for most people uh, to hook up at least some of the routers to the internet. So we added gateway service and data centers and they would accept VPN tunnels. And those uh, Freifunk routers could now um, make a tunnel, connect to the gateway, and now we have one citywide network. Now every device within that network, within the entire city connected to Freifunk can talk to every other device. Due to some legal specialty in, that we have in Germany, and I don't want to get into the details um, because it probably doesn't apply to most other countries, um, we route all internet directed traffic through the gateway servers. So for example, uh, you have your phone at the bottom of the screen and uh, you got a service running at the top of the screen. Now the phone wants to talk to the service wants to access it and the router uh, which hosts the phone could send the traffic through various ways in this figure apparently. So it could take the direct route A through the VPN tunnel to the gateway onto the service. But there's other ways as well. It could uh, decide to do two wireless hops and then uh, pass it on route B to another gateway server and then you see there's even more ways afterwards. So for those of you familiar with routing, of course, um, it's not uncommon to have uh, more than one possibility, but um, just imagine, it looks slightly complicated here with just six routers. Just imagine you have a city with a thousand routers. This would be very complicated. And then participation in Freifunk is 100% voluntarily. So people turn off and on their routers all the time. So your network topology changes constantly. And we use mostly Wi-Fi links and they're unreliable. So you don't want to just use any connection, you want to use the best connection. And this is really where the mesh protocols come in. So to do this manually in a routing table, which you probably could, uh, you would constantly have to update it second by second by second, it's just not reasonable. And this is what a mesh protocol does for you. So as you can tell, mesh protocols are complex. They have to deal with that constantly changing topology. They have to deal with unreliable radio links. You know, there's people walking by antennas, people are bags of water, essentially absorbing or reflecting microwaves. There's leaves in the trees, there's humidity, like rain, fog or whatever. And so your radio links constantly change, or the quality does. And then uh, you probably want to avoid certain things like routing loops. You don't want your packets to run in circles if there are any. You don't want your data to get lost. So the mesh protocol has to handle that. And uh, our goal at least is uh, to make it 
widely affordable, so it has to perform on cheap um, home routers. And maybe you want to have special services like roaming. So you make a zip call uh, with your mobile phone and you walk through the street from one Freifunk router to the next, and you don't want your connection to drop. So there's not one mesh protocol, there's many, probably more than I listed here. So there's a better approach to mobile ad hoc networking, Batman Advance, Babel, BMX, optimized link state routing versions one and two. And you might be asking, so which one is the best? And the answer is, there is no answer to that. Actually, um, a lot of research and a lot of brain cells went into development uh, of these mesh protocols over the past 20 years, and there's not the one mesh protocol which does it all perfectly. Um, that's why actually why people meet once a year uh, in some city in Europe and uh, let their mesh protocols compete. So if you want to check out the pros and cons of each mesh protocol, you could probably check uh, battlemesh.org and see how they perform. What I can tell you is that at Freifunk, we uh, mostly use OLSR and Batman Advance currently, but that may very well change in the future. So uh, when I do a talk about um, Freifunk, uh, I usually start out differently uh, because like the regular people, not so tech savvy, they think the internet is their favorite homepage or um, I don't know, the search engine or whatever. They don't have a clear picture in their head of what the internet is and how it works. So it's very hard for them to wrap their minds around the idea of what Freifunk is. I know I don't need to explain the internet in this audience. However, I'd like to uh, point out some design goals. So obviously the internet is a coupling of multiple networks, hopefully redundant was supposed to be distributed, no single entity controlling it, um, was supposed to be open and was supposed to be neutral. So the, uh, the, the infrastructure is separate from the data which is transported and everything is treated equally. We all know what the state of the internet is, but I think those design goals are still valid. So what we do at Freifunk is open, free, free of charge, neutral, and decentralized networks. Plural, actually, because it's not non one network, it's many. Open to us means it's open for anybody to participate. I can take Hamburg for, as an example because I'm from there. So when you walk through the city, you would see a network, SSID, hamburg.freifunk.net, and it's unsecured, so you can just click on it you connect it, that's it. We don't want your name, we don't want your phone number, your credit card number, password, any kind of credentials, just use it and have fun, enjoy. More interestingly to you might be, it's just as easy to participate on the providing side. So you can provide access by setting up a node or many nodes, and you can run services within that network. Um, I'll get into services later. So free is as in freedom, so we use uh, mostly free software. Uh, we do it free of charge, so nobody earns any money with it. And it's obviously then non-commercial. And it's actually very, very good because we don't have that, um, that conflict of interest you might have with uh, your commercial telecom on one side and its customers on the other side. Their interests might not always be the same. At Freifunk, Hopefully all the decisions that we make are in the best interest of the users because the people operating the network are the people using the network and vice versa. So it's really a network for the people, by the people. Anybody can t participate on the administrative side as, or just as like they can use it. Um, famous example of that where uh, you have a conflict of interest with commercial telecoms is uh, net neutrality. It's of course, it's good for every user. Some telecoms want to charge twice and so they are not net neutral. <laughs> and uh, as I said, it's a decentralized network. So it's decentralized in a way, if you remember that picture of, uh, of the mesh nodes, they're all operated by different people. So it's not one entity controlling it. It's very many people. And it, there's not one Freifunk mesh network, there's very many. 
So actually, we got uh, currently more than 310 uh, communities, uh, mostly throughout Germany and some in Austria. I hope this can change after this talk. <laughs> and if you want to check out that uh, map live, you can do so at community.fifunk.net. Uh, don't worry that it's HTTP. It's just a, um, it'll forward you to an encrypted site. It's just shorter. And it will list like all the attributes of those communities, like which mesh, mesh protocols they use, what, what their homepage is, and so on. Once again, since I'm from Hamburg, I take Hamburg as an example. So uh, you would see all those little dots uh, over the map of Hamburg, and all those are Freifunk nodes. So currently, we have um, more than 1,000 nodes active, and they are randomly distributed throughout the city because there is no plan behind. They are set up by random people in random places. So they operated basically anywhere, in homes, on rooftop, church towers, in community centers, hack spaces, of course, in cafes and venues, anywhere. And uh, two or three years ago, we started also to provide uh, access to refugee camps. And I think that's very important to them, much more important than a lot of people think at first, first uh, thought, you know. Um, because they have friends and family scattered throughout the entire world that they want to stay in touch with. Uh, they want to know what's going on in the home country that they came from, and uh, they want to know how this country works that they live in now, which is so foreign to them. So in a lot of ways, uh, or translation tools on the internet are very useful for them. So in a lot of ways, ex access and free access to the internet is much more important to them than it is to us. You can check out this map live. I'm gonna explain a little bit to you what it does. So uh, yeah, all these blue, uh, red, and green dots are five funk nodes somewhere. And you would see maybe like these long green lines. The color is the link quality. So you have bad links here. You got good links here. And these actually are long distance radio links. So this one's almost two kilometers long. It's got a transmission quality of 98%. And then since this mesh protocol does everything automatically, for example, these two, they are not it's not like there are antennas pointed at each other. They're just in range of each other. And they see each other and they make a connection here, which is not very good in this case, but it works. It's also good, uh, for example, um, to have as a backup. If their internet drops out, they can use uh, the internet connection of the other one and vice versa. OK, so you can take a look at the map in parallel at uh, map Hamburg Freifunknet and play with it. So you don't get so bored from me talking. I talked about um, a lot about nodes or access points or routers. What we use, uh, we call them nodes. Uh, Freifunk nodes are basically mostly off the shelf routers. So you would have your regular um, omnidirectional antenna router or sometimes we use section antennas or uh, these dishes that you see at the top for long distance radio links. And uh, quite a lot of devices are supported. Um, and what you would do is you uh, unpack your router, go to the configuration interface and exchange the firmware, which is already on there by the vendor, with the Freifunk firmware. It's currently based on OpenWRT, might be lead in the future, we'll see. But the firmware details, like which mesh protocol they use, what services are pre-installed on the router and running, that actually varies by community. So every community can do what they think is best for them. Talked about services. Um, obviously, the most renowned and asked for service is internet access, but that's not all. So um, you can actually run services within that network that never have to go through the internet. They can, but they don't have to. So what I've seen running on Freifunk networks is blocks, encrypted video chat, file sharing with FTP or C file. That's kind of like um, Dropbox or whatever. It's open source implementation. Uh, Git servers, new social instances. Uh, it's kind of like Twitter, also open source, SIP telephony, mumble, radio streaming, podcasting. People run new servers or webcams. 
or whatever, you know. And um, some people really do cool art installations with that. I'll always give like one example because it's, I think it's very funny. So somebody um, connected a Raspberry Pi uh, to his router and made it possible for anybody to upload videos to that Raspberry Pi and the videos would be projected across the street from his house on the wall. So can't think of anything that could go wrong with that. So um, Freifunk basically is what you make it. You know, if you have any idea, just do it. It's, it's a network for you to play with. And I think that's kind of like really the hacker spirit behind it. You get something, some infrastructure somebody else built and you, you can build on it, you can participate in, you can play with it, whatever. And that's what makes it so much fun, really. So people ask us a lot, so who, who are you? Who are these Freifunkers? Why do you do it for free? Are you crazy? And Freifunk is not one person or one set of persons. It's actually very many different factions that all think this is a good thing. So a lot of clubs support us, for example, especially like if, if we want to sign a contract to get on a roof or whatever, uh, then we need a legal person. So clubs like the CCC and others uh, sign contracts for us. Um, there's data centers giving us um, traffic, rec space, electricity, internet exchanges, let us peer. So we are AS49009 in Hamburg <laughs> and we would love to peer with you if you are within the same internet exchange, let us know. Uh, sometimes the municipalities, so some cities say, hey, uh, you can use our buildings or uh, give us money or both or whatever. And basically, it's it's the average person of the street. So it's you and me and everybody and anyone can participate in. And it's all done by volunteers. Once again, nobody makes any money with it and it's supposed to stay that way. And that also means any type of skill is welcome. You know, you don't have to be a techie to participate. You can just, you know, if you want to do graphics or whatever, just do it. Word and security, so I said it's a, it's a open Wi-Fi, there's no password, which also means it's unencrypted. Apparently you can also do um, encrypted open networks like they do here at camp, uh, but you would have to type in some random credentials at least, which would scare off most people. And we think this is the easiest way to do. And sometimes people say, oh, well, can you do that? It's unencrypted, people could sniff the traffic in the air, which is true, so. Um, they could sniff the tra uh, traffic between the end device and the access point. The range of Wi-Fi is obviously very limited, but the chances are there. On the other hand, the chances people sniffing your traffic on the internet, if it's internet directed traffic, is 100%. If you want to be sarcastic about it, it's actually more than 100% because we know there's more than one party sniffing all of everybody's traffic. So the only thing keeping you safe is really end-to-end -end encryption. That's what we tell people, use end-to-end -end encryption. You're only safe if the data is encrypted between you and the device you're communicating with. And then you don't have to trust us, me, anybody. It shouldn't matter which infrastructure you're running on. You can just use it. Another question that people ask us, so if I connect my Freifunk router to my home network to give it internet access so it can set up a VPN tunnel, do I compromise my home network? And the answer is no, they are separated. This is a topic which is uh, very dear to me, a long haul radio links, because I think it's just awesome fun. You get to see nice climb roofs and um, see beautiful panor panoramas over the city you live in. But as you can tell from the pictures at the bottom, uh, it's a lot more work than just a flash router connected to power and that's it. So sometimes, um, first of all, you have to get on, onto the roof, which is more difficult than you would think. It takes us maybe nine months to negotiate with some building orders. And then maybe there's no electricity on the roof, so you have to uh, set up the electricity, you have to if you're on top of the roof, you have to worry about lightning strike. So you have to really make a proper installation. And if you did all that, you probably want to put more than one router on there. So you want to put a set of routers pointing in every direction and have more than one link. And you need, need to do a lot of manual cl um, configuration. So it's a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it. Um, 
why do we do that? Um, gives you redundancy. The more connected the network is, the more direct links are between the nodes, the more redundancy you have. Obviously, if some link drops out or your internet connection drops out, you can still use your radio link and so on. If your mesh protocol is smart, it will also give you load distribution. So um, it will sense some uh, path is congested and take another route. And it gives you independence of the internet. And I only put like half jokingly here, democracy insurance. Um, unfortunately, we've seen over the last couple of years uh, what people do with the internet. So they sniff your traffic, they censor the internet, they turn it off altogether. And this would be a network which is decentral and still works when the internet is turned off. So we still have a way to communicate. Um, I don't want to let you off on a sad note. So I really want to tell you that it's a lot of fun and you get to play with hardware that maybe you have at home, but most people don't. Uh, you get to go to places that uh, you probably wouldn't go if you look very closely. There's somebody hanging with a drill in his hand off the top of that building, installing antennas. And you get to install Wi-Fi in the most random places and make people really happy. And my message would be copy what we do, build on it, feed it back to the community, set up your Freifunk community today. Thanks. Time for questions? Yeah. Right. Oh, how about now? <laughs> cool. Thank you very much, Andre. Um, yeah, we've got time for a few questions if anyone's got one. Um, I've got one to begin with. So if we want to, if I want to create a Freifunk node in uh, at my home, mm -hmm. what would I need to do, practically speaking? Yeah, um, starting out is a little bit difficult because you have to set up the entire diff um, infrastructure. So what you would have to do, for for example, you would have to make a decision for which firmware you use. Obviously, you could build your own firmware based on OpenWT or, open, uh, uh, or any other open um, firmware, but that would be very difficult. Or you could uh, choose one which is already out there and configure it for your purposes. This is the router side. And then on the backend side, you would have to send, uh, set up some central infrastructure, at least if you do it the way we do, because some services are unfortunately still centralized because we cannot do it any other way. So for example, IPv6 in our network works without any central components, but for IPv4, we need DHCP running on DHCP servers. So you would have to set up that. Or if you want to use gateways, because in your country you have to route the tra traffic through gateways, then you would have to set up those. So starting out is not that easy, but um, lots of people have done it. So there's more than 300 communities, and I, I think lots more people could do it. So, so to start, if you've got a public IP address at home, you mm. can't just flash a router and plug it in. It's a bit more than that. Um, you could, but it okay. would be okay. by connected. itself, yeah. you know, <laughs> it would be connected to any other. Yeah. Okay. yeah, you can add more nodes, and if they're in radio range of each other, then it would automatically connect. You could talk within that little network then and let okay. it grow from there. Uh, cool. Okay. How, and how long has it taken to get from the beginning of Freifunk in, in Germany to the 300,000 nodes you have now? Earth, 34. Oh, 34,000, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Not quite That'll as much. That'll be next year. Um, so I think Freifunk started out sometime in 2003. I wasn't participating back then. And then it grew rapidly. And then the laws changed in Germany, and which is almost killed it until people found other ways to compensate with that. So too difficult to explain, but people have found other arrangements, how they can deal with that. And then it grew back again for them. So, and um, in the last two or three years, it grew rapidly to the size that we have now. Yeah. Cool. Have we got any other questions from anyone here? Oh, yep. Yeah. Hold on, I'll take a round of the opera. Hi. Is it completely uh, legally? Uh, yes. You don't need any no. licenses to, no. uh, to put your antennas no, we, on the roof? No, yeah, we use Wi-Fi, which yeah. is public, uh, you know, it's uh, publicly accessible. Anybody can use it. Mm -hmm. Once again, uh, certain frequencies in the five gigahertz band, for example, are limited in use. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, in Germany, you would go to the Bundesnetzagentur and say, hey, I want to use those frequencies, can I? And they might uh, allow you or not. I don't know how it is in England, for example. Mm -hmm. But actually, most frequencies you can just use, yeah. And do you know if the, the free net of uh, Freifunk net in the Netherlands? I don't know of anything. Maybe there's something which is similar. Um, there's, for example, I don't know about um, the Netherlands, but uh, in uh, Spain, there's GUIFI, which is also a community operated network. They also do of fiber optic cables and lots of other stuff. Athens has a big uh, network which is slightly similar to ours. So there are similar communities in other countries, yeah. And there are plans to, uh, to connect them, the countries and um, Not really, we could, because uh, <laughs> if, if we are at the uh, same internet exchange point, mm -hmm. or through something which we call intercity VPN, which is also a, a VPN connecting not uh, routers to gateway servers, but networks to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sorry. We had another question in the back somewhere, did we? Oh. So, do you have to ask for permission when you want to install something on top of a bu building? You have to. Depends. When you when you live there, you can just do it, I guess. Oh, okay. uh, if if you want to get on the rooftop, you might have to ask your landlord. Mm -hmm. Depends on who owns the building. If it's a city building, so um, you might want to go to the city and ask him uh, if you could use it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So you don't currently have any uh, locations outside of Germany. Uh, no locations that call themselves Freifunk. As I said, there are other similar networks, but they might be called differently, and um, I don't know them all. And how do you propose internet access working for those locations if they're trying to get out on that network, if they're in a different country? Um, okay, you mean if if somebody would set up Freifunk in a different country uh, like as their own network or yeah so somebody creates their own network over in the UK and mm -hmm. they're trying to somebody on connects their network and they're trying to connect to the internet right they then... would basically have to set up the same infrastructure that we did um, it's basically the question that the host asked in the beginning what I would I have to do to start a network like this so I would have to create firmware for my routers and I would have to do some um, backbone infrastructure on the other hand and you would have to set that up. Oh, obviously you could uh, uh, just take a router from some, some other city and connect it through a VPN tunnel but that's not what we want to do. We don't want to just be a VPN offloader. Uh, we want to build a city wide radio network. Hopefully that answers the question. Did, did, did you mention that Austria was connected? Yes, um, they call it Funkfeuer, okay. but it's very similar. All right, so effectively they have their own AS number, do they, effectively? Yeah. So if uh, a free funk network was to be done in the UK, you'd probably suggest having its own AS number as well? Absolutely, and okay. we are not one AS in Germany either, so there's many oh, AS's. So multiple AS's. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, that, For each that community, if, if they have that. Okay. But you'd have recipes and firmware that people could customize, for example. Exactly, so AS. everything is open source, you can find it on GitHub, and uh, okay. yeah, we would love for people to use what we build. Okay. So with, with the connectivity from your current FreeFunk nodes, where they hop onto the internet is that generally at an exchange point for each city that they each node would have a radio link to as opposed to everyone's home current internet connection it's both so okay. um it depends how your router connects to that gateway server okay. could either be through a vpn tunnel or a direct radio link okay mm -hmm. That's fine. Cool. do you have any other questions here? no oh yep yeah, we do here we go Uh, in terms of IP addressing, um, if I were to set up a web server, would it just use its existing public address, or do you use like an internal range for, for did, internal services? Did you wanna you wanna make it um, accessible as an internal service? Yeah, we'll say for iPhone. So for way. IPv4, it, it depends on, on the community, and so I can only speak for Hamburg how we do it. For IPv4, we have um, local 
um, RFC 1918 addresses. And uh, so you could not connect to the internet with IPv4, but we have public IPv6 space. So your service would be okay. accessible from the Freifunk network and also in the public internet. Super. Um, okay, well, I think that's it for questions. So, Andre, thank you very much indeed for telling us all about uh, Freifunk. Thanks for having me. Yeah.